This is part two in the workflow series. The zero was the overview, part one, A and B were the, the macros in two different ways. And we generated these TIFF files, which were the bright field images from the ND2 files. Um, and what we're gonna do is use Elastic to generate an area uh, around these cells as best as we can to then use that in quantifying in cell profile on the next step. If you bring it into Fiji and have a quick look at the data sets in this bright field image, and it's very similar in DIC, you'll see uh, bright and dark peaks on either side with a kind of shadow to it. And while you can try and um, offset to this background level and remove some background correction and then try and square the image to make both of these positive values and then try and remove the hole in the middle, it's, it's a lot of work and it's not... Um, it's not great for changes in the sample when you have some some uh, changes in illumination and you have some shadows due to due to artifacts and things in the image and condensation in the sample container. It can be a little bit you know a little bit variable at times. So it's really really cool to use something like Elastic for training a model on on something like this. And and um, we're gonna just go for a very quick tour of what Elastic can do. And there's a loads of features. I'm not going to be able to go over, um, and, I, and many I haven't even used, but basically I use pixel classification or classification plus object classification as well. So we're going to create a new uh, pixel classification, um, and we'll put that in our folder here, and we'll just call it my project for now. Um, once that opens, what we have to do is pull in the data, and that's why we exported the TIFFs. So we're going to add these images in here. Um, we can use all of them and go through all of them and train them, but basically condition A and condition B have slightly different morphologies. The controls aren't too different, but what I might do is pick it, pull in just a few of a subset just that, that um, go over the, the different morphologies and shapes that you might see. Um, these are relatively consistent, so we don't need that many. I'm just gonna do the controls and another one of the controls of two different morphologies here and pull those in. I'm going to give you a breakdown of some of the information on that image there and the sizes. Then we'll run through to the next section here, the feature selection. This bit's kind of um, kind of interesting. You can play with the options. And what it does, it generates different images from the base image. And then when you annotate, it will pick up on the different textures and the different things. So let's just draw in a few now and have a look and see what they look like to get a visual on those. And down here we can see the different visuals. Some of them don't do much. Gaussian smoothing on that size really didn't change much. Um, and as you increase that Gaussian smoothing, you'll see more and more. There's a bunch of different calculations of gradients and Gaussians and, and things like that that um, become quite complicated. But really what we're looking for is just how, how it picks up on the textures that we're, we're interested in. And some of this we can do empirically. Um, and we'll go back to that in just a moment. So we'll just select that kind of things for now. I will say that if you're looking at bigger structures, what you can do is you can add something like this in, depending on how big your structure is. And then if you have a big sort of swooping cell boundary and the images are really zoomed in, you really want to use some of these. But for, for this image, the the this size of image, you'll find that it's just too it's too blurred out and it's not picking up on details on the size we want. So all of these details out here are not really of interest. So that's something to note that it depends on the size of the structure you're looking at. So you can add additional length scales if you're looking at, say, like a boundary of a cell that's sort of larger and swoops across the entire image. We'll use these for now and we'll come back to them in a moment. So we've selected those features and you can preview and have a look there. Now we're going to do training. Um, and throughout here, really, we should keep an eye on these keyboard shortcuts. Um, there are um, lots of them and they're a little bit uh, bizarre to be honest. Um, what I normally do is I take a screenshot of this and then I, I pull that in to, uh, just, to, just to keep track of what's going on. And so these are some we'll use page up, page down, plus, minus, uh, brush, eraser. This is for selecting the different classes we're going to be labeling. And then the, the prediction and the segmentation. Like these are the ones I use the most. But I always kind of keep that at hand because I always forget these shortcuts are not intuitive. First thing we need to do is double click on these and label our uh, different options. Then we've got label cells. Then we can label background. Keep things short. we we'll use that. And then we can go around and label them with these two. We can use our one and two shortcut keys to, to go there. And we've got the zoom in and zoom out with a plus and a minus. And so we're going to zoom in and zoom out and do some, do some labeling. So background is quite easy. Just label some background. Um, and if you notice, 
on something like this you might have a little bit of fall off darker on one side and brighter on the other so you know label some of the dark label some of the bright as well with the background we're going to zoom in and then pick the cells and then try, try try not to label too much but go around the edges a little bit if you can also if you're going to do a lot of this i'd recommend buying a, a cheap uh, tablet um, wacom is the brand name but something like xp pen is perfectly good as a couple of others too um, you don't need a big one really if you've got a single screen and you go ahead and just label a few things try and pick up on a different textures remember we have this shadow so kind of go across in different directions um, and this Oh, and I did a, made a mistake that I'm using a Fiji shortcut of space to try and move around. And when you make a mistake, you're going to have to erase it. There isn't an undo, so I can hit E for eraser and just scrape that one out and B back to brush. The uh, middle click is the click for the scan on this particular interface. And you can label some of the other cells that are slightly different morphologies and some of the lamellopodia, things like that. And go around like that. Okay, once you've got a few things labeled, um, let's zoom out a little and we'll hit the live update. And it will give us a breakdown. This, this is the, the first first go. It's, it's done a reasonable job. What we need to do is tell it a little bit more on the background there. And we're going to go across here. I find that going perpendicular to the structures can be slightly better than going around. Um, and that's a, a little better. We're never going to get it perfect because of the way it shadows and comes out to the edges. And what we're going to do in Cell Profiler is if once we've got this area of cells, we're going to erode it a little bit to make it a little bit smaller. So we'll keep that in mind. And this is this is approximate, like I say, that it could be it could be better, but we're just going to do this quickly and make it sort of you know, as um, quantitative as we can do, given you know some of the constraints. We have. Uh, I'm going to turn this off. When it gets complicated, always keep that turn off so you're not. Uh, cooking the CPU too much on every single move. Page up and page down will shuffle between these ones. Um, and it's good to have a look at the different images. So we'll take a look at this one, see how it does. Um, and live update to see. And it's pretty similar down to the next one. This has a different morphology. And so we might want to zoom in and have a look at that. We see some yellow in this background here. So you have to kind of do as little as you can and kind of identify some of the things um, that are causing some issues uh, we won't be too greedy and we're going to show some of the things that actually get once we get too far and once we get too close to the cells here with a particular set of things we're training on it starts to eat away at what we're seeing there's a segmentation option here to just to give us a segmentation that's s and then p for the probabilities um, and they're useful a lot of times um, it will start to eat in and, and then your segmentations will have holes in it. We don't need that. We don't want them to be split up. And you can start to see this top bottom kind of shadow that you see from the from the DIC. Um, and so what we're actually going to do is going to go back and look at the, 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 if we turn off live update, we can get back to this feature selection. It turns out, uh, and what you can do, and I recommend for different things, is to, is to turn off the bigger ones and work with just the smaller ones and then go back and see how it, how it does with the annotations you've made and then what you can do is you can turn them all on and say okay it may be that the edges and the textures is more important than the color and intensity depends on the on the data set uh, i think it turns out for this the the texture on this one seems to be more important than um the other two and so you can try just that particular set and back to training um and hit live update and then with the, with the texture on it doesn't seem to eat in as much as before when we go to cell profiler, we're going to smooth out some of these bumps around the edges, smooth them out and make them slightly smaller. So really just aiming for mostly the bulk of the cell. Tiny little holes are OK. They will be filled in. And so that would probably be sufficient. Um, you know, you can tweak it a little bit more if you want to on, on a few little places and try to keep things even as much as you can in, in each direction and have you know a few labels for cells few labels for background and vice versa and go back and forth make sure we have relatively e even amount of each so we're going to run with that for the moment that's probably fine i don't want to just keep tweaking but sometimes you tweak too much and, and it doesn't really get that much better okay so on to the next section is the prediction export um and then we're going to export the probabilities you can export different options there probabilities of it being in class a cells or class b background and we're going to uh, change the settings here and this particular window could deserves a almost a 10 minute um tutorial on its own sometimes but um what we're going to do is look through some of the options and the export options here watch out for the different types of tiffs and sequences you have um, a lots of different types and it depends on the data set and that gets complicated and you have to kind of test them out we have a single image 
we're going to export just a TIFF, which is kind of the easy option. Um, and then you'll see this is the data set directory. This is where the files came from. The nickname is the name of the file, which is going to be here, like condition A02. And the result type is going to be probabilities, but you can just sort of scrub that out and put in anything you need to. Um, one thing you also notice is it's a the, the image size is a collection image, but it now has two channels, one for the each class. Um, and we actually only want one of them because when there's two classes they're just the inverse of each other and so you might as well come in here and just change that down to a one channel TIFF for just that one there so that's sufficient for that part and you'll see it'll update here um, you can just hit export all, all that will export everything that you've had in Elastic at that time but really what we want to do is batch and go and give it everything we're going to export so we're going to go to select files and pick all of them put them in at this point always save um, you know, save as you go to be honest if you put a lot of annotation work in and then once you've saved it just in case something goes wrong and it crashes while it's cooking you can hit process all files and then that's going to go through there and process and it takes it takes a not too long it does um, um, multi-thread pretty well um, and if you know if you if you don't have a big computer you can also do some training um, on your laptop and you know uh, on a smaller computer and then once you're happy you can bring that to one of the workstations or a bigger machine if you need to run the batch processing at the end, end of things if you have lots and lots of data but you can certainly go to lunch while it's running and come back for the next step so that should be done in just a second and let's have a look we see them coming out here the tiffs here what we're going to do is just it's always good to have uh, fiji open and, and, and drag one of the results over and have a look see how it came out and you can see that now we have these probabilities and it should run from zero to one. We're going to take these into cell profiler and use them as the area of the cells for the quantification of, of the signal. 